Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Okay, I am getting my little camera set up and I want to watch on my other monitor so that maybe I can see the comments. Hopefully, if you guys have any, good morning. Welcome. Please let me know if you can hear me. I'm Ellen Gormley and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I'm seeing the live now on my monitor. So I should be able to and I've got my sound turned off, so we're all good. So I should be able to read the comments if I can look with my readers <laughs> at my yarn and look with my eyes on the monitor. I should be able to read your comments as we go along. Good morning, Carlene, welcome. Thank you so much for being here on such late notice. I tend to be spontaneous because I'm so disorganized and hello, Melody, good to see you. Um, I'm so disorganized, but really I'm not. Like I've got a lot going on and I've got some fun stuff for you today. I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Yay! With the these three gorgeous Hanks of Louette gems, bulky, chunky. Um, it, it says bulky, chunky. It's supposed to be like a size five, but really it's just a really fat four. <laughs> Um, and it's 100% merino wool, and this is the color sandalwood, and I thought it would be perfect for fall. So I know, uh, Carleen, you probably don't get much fall in Arizona, but um, still, I think this is a lovely color, and I think you can do a lot with three hanks of uh, gems, 100% merino wool, machine washable and dryable, um, 103 yards each, so 309 yards. Ooh, I just did math on camera live. Woohoo, yay for me. Um, so that is going to be coming up. We need to decide on that. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Brad's mom, good to see you. Yes, uh, welcome. So I have Theo here with me, but um, his meower is gone, friends. Like, he is not... He's like opening his mouth to meow and nothing is coming out. So I'm keeping an eye on him for other symptoms. But um, I think he is just a little, got a little cold or a little laryngitis or something. So also today on our agenda, we're going to be working on this four stitch Tunisian crochet pattern. So this is what I would say is putting it all together, putting it all together. So I thought we would learn to get today together this uh, lacy Tunisian multi-stitch pattern. So, so many of the times I have taught you just one stitch at a time. Well, here's four of them put together in one gorgeous package. So we're gonna work on that today. I have three colors. You can use two or one, it doesn't matter. Um, but I have my uh, melon color scheme <laughs> today. One more. Uh, nod to summer even though it is now officially fall so one last goodbye to summer with this and a hail hello to fall um with this so um <laughs> yeah her, your cat sometimes uses her inside voice <laughs> yeah I, we had muffin here the grand kitten for um a long weekend and there was a lot of playing and not a lot of hissing, but a lot of meowing and vocalizing. So I don't know if he strained his voice, but I think he'll be okay because I don't hear him coughing or sneezing or anything like that. Also, what else do I need to tell you today? Um, life has been crazy. Um, just an example of how crazy life has been. And while I'm doing that, I am going to pick up a color of yarn. I will start with the lighter pink. Um, and this is paint box yarns, and this one is Brava, and that one's Brava. Um, I'm going to just pick up some yarn and start chaining 27 while I'm telling you the backstory of life. So if you guys, um, you may not know this about me, but all of my in-person people do, that I am not a coffee drinker. I have never drank coffee. I have always just woken up with um, hot chocolate <laughs> and so or uh, chocolate milk I am not a coffee drinker I never have been to explain to you how life has been for me lately I am now a coffee drinker <laughs> six seven eight nine ten of course I have started with the sugary latte stuff and now I have found that I am drinking cocoa cafe sugary lattes <laughs> almost every day 
And I think if my calculations are right while I'm talking, I think I might be at 27 now. So I'm going to stop and count and give you a moment to count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Hey, pretty good. I must be on today. Um, so 27. So for our first row, our, we're just going to, and I'm going to change colors every row so you can see it illustrated more completely. The first row is just Tunisian simple stitch. So I'm going to pull up a stitch in the uh, back bar, back ridge, back bump, back loop, whatever you want to call it, of the chains. Not the first one because this one on the hook counts as the first one. And I am going to have to yell for Ho because he is ringing the bell, but there is nobody home but me to... Um, to let him out. Hobby, come on. Come on, buddy. So he will just have to wait. Um, let's see. Ooh. Let's see. I'm reading the the comments here. Good day from Australia. Hello. Thank you so much. And thanks for being here. Yeah, going from not coffee to big to coffee is a lot, but you know, I just felt like I needed some kind of treat or something comforting first thing in the morning. And that is, and since Mara is a big coffee drinker, you know, of course, I the gateway drug to coffee is what hot chocolate with a little bit of espresso in it. <laughs> so that's currently where I am. So I'm not sure if I'm happy about this or not, because I always prided myself on not being a coffee drinker, but it is just such a nice little treat. It feels like a little hug in the morning. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll keep it up or not. Uh, so somebody, are you seeing signs of spring? Oh, in um, Australia? Yeah, that would be good. Here we are starting to see signs of fall. I was crunching some leaves under my feet as I took the dog out the other day, and the leaves are indeed turning colors, which is kind of crazy because it's like 80 degrees here today in Southern Ohio. So I'm just pulling up a loop in the back bar, back ridge, back loop of each chain across. Nothing new or unusual here. You totally can do this. I'm probably not going to count for each row, you all, but, um, well, I guess maybe I should. But we're going to end up with 20 stitches 20, 27 loops, 27 stitches, 27 loops on the hook for every row. We are not increasing or decreasing, although that might make a really good lesson, wouldn't it? Um, the dog continues to ring the bell. And so I, because I don't want any accidents <laughs> in the house and I'm the only one home, I'm going to go let him out. Talk amongst yourselves. Maybe come up with a key word. To maybe say what your favorite Tunisian stitches are. I'll be right back.
oh my gosh, that little stinker. <laughs> of course, he didn't need to go out, and instead he got a really big bone to keep him occupied so that he wouldn't keep introduce or interrupting my show. Hello, the show. Oh, well, JY, thank you so much for coming. If you need to go to bed, you can watch this later. So don't fear, you will not miss it. It will be up later. And now I'm out of breath from running downstairs to let the dog out. I have not been running much, as you might guess, because I've been too busy drinking lattes. Trill will go in. You're having computer trouble. Oh, okay, Jane. Well, hopefully we see you later. Oh, the honeycomb stitch. The, Carlene, are you talking about the Tunisian one? I love that one. I think I have taught that one already. I'll have to find a link for you. Okay, so when we have all 27 loops on our hook, we're just doing a typical return pass. Yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over and pull through two. Carlene, I'll have to try to link that one because that one is indeed one of my absolute favorites. The Honeycomb Tunisian Stitch. We're gonna yarn over, pull through one for the first one and then yarn over and pull through two for every one after that. I'm sorry since we're going live that I am crocheting right-handed, but I am a right-hander, but there is a Tunisian playlist and many other of my playlists also come in left-handed. So hopefully that will help you lefties out. I don't believe in forcing you to be different than what you are. Okay, so Tunisian Simple Stitch is the first one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change color for the first row of fans. So I'm gonna back the truck up just a little bit and go under here and under a chain so that when I'm pulling through the last two loops of the stitch, I'm going to pull through with the new color and that effectively changes color in Tunisian crochet. So I am going to yarn over with the new color and pull through the remaining two loops, okay? I'll tension it just a little bit to keep it uniform, hold those tails on the back, and okay, here we go. So the next row is the fan row. So I am just, we're just doing a normal Tunisian simple stitch across, Tunisian simple stitch across, and the magic happens on the return pass. Okay, so we are just pulling up a, a bar in the vertical loop of each uh, stitch across. So life has been crazy. My stepfather, you all, is doing really well. He should be going home soon. Hello, Johnny. no problem being late. You just missed me having to go run and take out my dog. <laughs> but I'm back now, so welcome back. Um, so my stepfather Dave is doing really well. Hopefully he will be going home. He's been at a, we moved him from a nursing home where we did not see him from March until September. And then we moved him to a, or he was granted um, admission to a special rehab hospital. And we are really grateful for that. I feel like they're taking much better care of him there and he's making much better progress there. Um, and so he, they're actually talking about discharging him to go home soon. So if you guys don't know the backstory, he had tongue cancer, lots of chemo and radiation. It was really awful and ugly. Several surgeries later, several really big surgery, reconstructive surgeries later, he um, has lost 100 pounds and is on a feeding tube and, and is unable to speak. And he, this has been going on for like four years now. And he was actually in hospice for about four days <laughs> and then graduated out of hospice. So yeah, I try to flip the tutorials for the lefties. So, and I, I appreciate the thanks. I appreciate every comment I get. And even if it's just a thanks or hey, Ellen, hi, every comment helps. And it helps too for um, getting my videos out and seen by the world. So thank you so much. Thank you for praying for my stepfather, Dave. I really appreciate it. Okay, so the return pass, we're on the fan stitch now. So we are at this grouping here. We're gonna do groupings. You've seen this one before, but when I put it with other stitches, that's where we're going today. So for the yarn over, we will yarn over one and pull through just one. Then we're gonna chain two, one, two. I realize 
that that in fact is simply three chains. But the way that Tunisian patterns are written, it is written chain one and then yarn over and pull through um, two loops twice or yarn over and pull through one and then chain two. So, but it is in fact three chains. It's just how you state it. So now this is where the, the fan begins. We're gonna yarn over and pull through six, but the very first one essentially is a chain. So we're only gonna see five vertical bars. So I'm trying to get myself all straightened around so that I can do one really gorgeous pull through six. I'm pulling through, yarn over, pull through one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> and so when you pull it up like this, you'll only see five spokes on the wheel. One, two, three, four, five, because the sixth one is buried over here in the chain. So you did it right if you only see five sunshine rays here and not six, even though the instruction said to yarn over and pull through six. Now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay, here's where we are. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull through six again and we'll end up with five rays of sunshine. Hello, Sharon, hello. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you'll see five rays of sunshine there and chain four. Also, I've been back to school now here in Southern Ohio, the school that I work for, the school that Patrick goes to. We have been full-time in person since the beginning of school in August. Aloha, hello. Three, four, five, six. This will be on replay, friends, so, um, if you missed the beginning foundations and stuff, never fear. You can go back and watch it later. I've not done the giveaway yet. So welcome, welcome. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And I should pay attention for the last one so that you guys can get it if you don't already have it. Chain four in between groupings. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay. Five rays of sunshine. Now we're going to um chain two or yarn over pull through one chain one and then pull through two i think i think that's right but remember i want to change color so i'm going to back the truck up a little bit back the back the needle up the hook up and retention that because i just pulled my tail too tight and yarn over and pull through with the new color um, Cincinnati Zoo is supposed to be getting a new kangaroo exhibit and i am very excited about that um they eat crops, oh, I guess like our deer here. But I, I mean, of course I love all animals and so I'm thrilled to see the new kangaroo exhibit at the Cincinnati Zoo. One of the best zoos I've been to. I'm so excited to have kangaroos here. So yarning over and pulling through with the new color. In this case, it's more of a watermelon color, a brighter fuchsia pink. And for the next row, we are going to Tunisian simple stitch. So we're going to get 27 loops on the hook, making sure to get, and this is where I have messed up on my swatch a few times. So I need to make sure and actually have 27. So pull up one in the top, the sun part of the ray of sunshine, and then make sure you get one in each of the four chains here so that we stay on count. But the most important thing is that at the end, when I have pulled up all the loops, that there will be 27 on the hook. So this is a nice wide swatch, friends. So it's um, that big. <laughs> so you, this is a good scarf size. So if you wanted to do exactly 27 stitches, then you could, um, make a scarf this wide and just keep right and going. If you wanna change the multiple, it's a multiple of six, six plus two, does that work out? No, it doesn't work out, it would be six plus three. But we need to account for, if you're figuring out the multiple of it, the one that is most uh, confusing or most persnickety is the fan or like I'm calling it sunshine today, but a fan stitch. So the one that's the yarn armor and pull through six, that's the one that you need to get the multiple right for, and then everything should fall into place. Okay, so I'm still pulling up one loop in each chain and each stitch across. There should be 27 loops. You've never done Tunisian crochet. You need to get a needle. 
Oh, well, thank you, Deb Johnny, for watching. Anyway, I think it's still a lot of fun, and I think you will love it once you get the hang of it because it's so rhythmic. So now that I have one in each, I'm going to make sure I have 27 because as I've been talking, I'm still not sure. I can't remember if I did this part right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yay, victory. Victory. Oh, you like those word pictures? Good. Um, so friends... Um, Tunisian crochet is a lot of fun and it's really easy and I and I hope that you find the time to get yourself a hook. Um, I can try and put a link to hooks in the description below after this whole video um, processes and then you know then you'll get yourself one. <laughs> so now we are going to uh, yarn over and pull through. Let's see did I do this? Did I do? Yeah I did this right. Okay, we're all good. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. We're setting up for the next row. Bye, JY. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. All right. So, um, like I said, we've been at school since August. We are wearing masks 100% of the time in the building. The kids have to... Kids. The students have to be... Um, so many feet away from each other pretty much at all times. It's really hard to police teenage boys. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, go to a shop. Cool. Yeah, if you can find a Tunisian hook somewhere, like, locally, absolutely support your local person first. Absolutely. Um, we've changed the eating and, and stuff. The kids are only allowed to eat in um, the cafeteria, and there's plexiglass dividers in between, and they're also allowed to eat in the gym because we've set up tables with plexiglass dividers there. So it's just, everything is so different. Okay, so I backed the truck up again here so that I could yarn over and pull through with the new color. I'm gonna go back to the pale pink. So I'm gonna pick that up. I like doing a different color for each row. That way you can see it illustrated more. Now we're doing the yarn over, Tunisian yarn over lace, which you guys absolutely have loved on the internet. And if you've not seen that bit, my video on Tunisian yarn over lace, you really need to because it's like the one that people love the most. So yarn over and then go through two single uh, stitches at the same time. So this is Tunisian simple stitch two together yarn over and pull up that loop. And so because I have a yarn over here, that counts as one, and then here's the next one, so it's still even, one, two, one, two. So we've not decreased all, or increased. Now we're increasing, now we're decreasing, so that it ends up being even, okay? So yarn over, and then Tunisian simple stitch, two together. Then yarn over, and then Tunisian simple stitch, two together. Yarn over. So if you guys are joining me late, these three hanks of Louette gems are um, 103 yards each. They're super wash, machine washable and dryable. They are gorgeous. This is the color sandalwood. Um, it's like a fat size four worsted, even though they call it bulky chunky. Um, you have one, but I have one, but put the one you like down most so I get the one you like. Okay, <laughs> I get it. Um, it's it's a fat four. So it's like, it says bulky chunky, but it's really like a fat worsted. So I think you'll really like it. It's a beautiful color for fall. And this package of three hanks is what I am giving away today. So what's gonna happen is I am going to process this video and take entries for the giveaway. The giveaway is these three hanks of Louette gems. And at the end here, we're just gonna have a yarn over and pull up a Tunisian Simple Stitch two together, and we should be done. Again, we should be counting two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. We are right on. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. So I'm going to process the video, and excuse me while I clear my throat. Maybe I should have a drink of coffee. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm gonna process the video, and in the comments below, and also I'm going to take everybody who has made a comment in the live chat, 
<clears throat> Excuse me. I think that weather change has got me. Maybe I have Theo's cold. What do you think? <clears throat> He's not been meowing well. Hey there. So we're doing a giveaway and we're doing this four stitch mashup of Tunisian crochet stitches. We are currently on the third one. And then these Louette gems are the giveaway. So comments in the chat will be entered to win. And the comments in the description, in the comment below the video after this video processes, those will be added in. You'll get one entry per person. Um, I don't care what you comment, just don't be mean. <laughs> and um, then I will, let's see, what's today? Today is the 26th. You know what? My birthday is coming up. Yes, cat got his own tongue. <laughs> That's funny. Um, my birthday is Tuesday. So I think Tuesday night at the end of Tuesday night, the 29th of September, at, after any comments left before midnight at the end of that day will be entered into a random drawing and I will pull a winner. Um, it does, unfortunately, I'm sorry, need to be a domestic winner, a United States or Canada winner because I have to ship it. But if I pull a name and it is an international person, then I will get you a prize somehow. <laughs> so for this yarn over Tunisian lace, we're yarning over and pulling through one, yarning over and pulling through two, making sure to grab that yarn over because it would be easy to like get confused but we're pulling through it and the yarn over so we're celebrating my birthday by giving away some yarn so enter to win by um, commenting here in chat right now if you're here um, commenting below the video if you're watching this on replay then um, comments after September 29th at midnight at the end of the day I will put all of those comments into a um, into a random number generator and pull a winner. I will then announce the winner um, probably in a few different places. I'll probably comment the or reply to the actual comment in the comments below the video. I probably will put it on the community tab of my page and I might announce it on Instagram. Um, and I am the Ellen Gormley on Instagram. Okay, so there's the Tunisian yarn over lace and the fan stitch and the Tunisian Simple Stitch. So we had Tunisian Simple, we had the fan, we had the yarn over lace, and now we are going to do full and simple. So this is the fourth stitch pattern that we're learning today. I'm gonna grab the green, which is the next color in our sequence. So the kids at school are doing really well, but we unfortunately have had some um, some actual tragedies um, among our students. A, a couple of our students have had very real tragedies in their lives. So I'm gonna do a full stitch first, which is the gap in between stitches, and then in the Tunisian simple stitch here, and then in the gap, which is the full stitch, and then in the Tunisian stitch, Tunisian simple, in the gap underneath the yarn over, <clears throat> And then the Tunisian symbol. So our students really have had a rough time. Yes, the Ellen Gormley on Instagram. Yes, I think right now my photo, I did put up like a photo of this stuff before I started that I was going live in five minutes. So if you see it, that is my account. Um, so our students have had a rough time and you know, it's been very stressful for, for them and for all of us who are trying to support them and through no fault of their own, life 2020 just keeps hitting people really hard. So, you know, we're just going to keep rocking and rolling and keep pushing on and realizing that this world is just temporary and do the best we can with it. And um, that's, that's as good as it gets. So I have started to drink coffee in my effort to take good care of myself. I'm trying to get back into getting a rhythm with you guys with the YouTube channel, which I absolutely adore my YouTube channel and it's so much fun. It makes me so happy to be back here. So here's how the Tunisian simple and Tunisian full stitch looks across. There should be 27 stitches, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. Yay, I'm gonna drink a sip of coffee. Do you guys have coffee today? Do you have hot chocolate? Do you have, look, I have a Christmas mug 
<laughs> I have a Christmas mug today. Tunisian is really, really fun. And if you have the skills to do crochet, you absolutely have the skills to do Tunisian. So now we are going to just yarn over and pull through just one, which yes, is a chain, but they say yarn over, pull through one. Then the remaining stitches all the way across, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And we're gonna do this all the way across, the yarn over and pull through two until two loops remaining, and that is when we are changing color. You could, of course, change color over here, and the pull through yarn could be a different color, but I'm trying to keep the integrity of each individual stitch because that's what I am teaching you all today. Now, all of these stitches I do have individual videos for. If you wanna see a whole fabric in each of the stitches, you can. Um, and maybe I'll put those links down below, I don't know. But you can find it for sure on the Tunisian um, playlist on my channel. Pulling up the last loop on a row you find tricky. Okay, let me try and pay more attention to that when I get to it on the next row. So when I have two loops left on the hook is when I am going to now yarn over and pull through with the new color. I'm just picking up the fuchsia that I never cut from before. So just picking it up from the back. Usually you go through two um, when you're picking up the last, the last stitch in the last bars. So down here, okay. Let me find a, a teeny hook. So on this edge, you would pick up two loops right there. You would pick up two loops right there. Um, I like a, this is a K, I think. It's a double-ended hook, but I always use it for Tunisian because I just really like this hook. <laughs> um, pick up two loops right there. Okay, so it's like a chain. Think of it like a chain. Now this one is harder to find. The, um, the fan stitch, it's harder to find two loops on the edge, but it is there. Okay, cocoa, yes. So I have, my coffee is really just cocoa and coffee mixed together, let's be honest. Okay, so yeah, it is hard to find that last one. If you could only find one, it's not the end of the world, but try to be uniform about it because you want your edges to be as neat and pretty as possible. All right, what was I saying? Totally lost track of my train of thought. Hmm. Okay, so I did the Tunisian full. Oh, and then we go back to Tunisian simple. So those are the four stitches, but I'm gonna, let's do at least one or two more rows. That way I can teach you um, how to, to see that, that last stitch there. Oh, for the giveaway, someone asked again, how do we do the giveaway? So leave a comment here, which you already did when you asked the question, how do we do the giveaway? And then, or if you're watching this on replay, go ahead and leave a comment underneath the video, any comment, just be nice. And I will randomly select from all the comments after midnight on September 29th at the end of that day, I am going to randomly pull a commenter and I will notify that person that they are the winner. Um, if it's an international person, then I will find a, a prize that's worthy of an international prize. And if it's a domestic and Canada person, then I will, um, yes, you're live, Shirley, hey. Um, I will ship out to a person who is domestic US and Canada these three hanks, but the international, if an international winner is chosen, um, I will have to do a digital prize and then I'll pick a second winner, you know, you know what I'm saying, until I can get rid of um, the yarn. But I I also have this in plum, a plum color, and I'm, I'm keeping that one too. This one though, a little bit of trivia, if you look up, um, I'm not terribly active on Ravelry anymore, but I, I left all my all of my projects, the first 300 or so projects are still there. My shop is not there anymore. So if you wanna shop for uh, patterns from me, you can go to lovecrafts or lovecrochet.com. Um, and it's in the description of my channel on YouTube and 
You can go to ellengormley.com, my website. Anyway, if you want to go to Ravelry and you can look at like my portfolio of like the first 300 or so of my designs, they're on there. And there's actually a design made with this in this color. And I don't know that Louette still sells the pattern. So I, I ought to look into it, but it is a little pond poncho but shorter ponchette and okay so we're at the last stitch so I wanted to show you so I'm going to turn this edge toward me a little bit so I can find the two loops can you identify them before I even go can you identify the two loops before I even put in my hook see if you are right see if your guess is correct right there okay right there Yes, so this yarn is 100% merino wool, machine washable and dryable. It does say bulky, chunky weight, but when you compare it to the worsted weight I have on my hook right now, it's very similar, okay? All right, did you guys win? <laughs> did you guys get the guess right? <laughs> okay, so I'm Tunisian, Tunisian simple uh, return passing across. Uh, also, you guys can see the Knit Picks um, hook reveal uh, video that I did for you guys a while back. That has an interchangeable Tunisian set in it, but it's, it's the whole set of all the sizes. So you might want to make sure that you love Tunisian crochet before you invest in all the sizes. Um, it is a beautiful set, definitely Christmas gift or Hanukkah gift worthy. Um, I also... I really get along, though, frankly, with just like a J and a K. I, I use a J and a K size Tunisian hooks most, most of the time. Okay, with two stitches remaining, it is time to um, change color. After the fuchsia comes the light pink again. So I will pick up the light pink and we'll do fans in the light pink this time. Okay, and this one might be interesting for you all to see because of that last stitch. But it's really Tunisian simple stitch for the forward pass and then the fan magic, sun ray, sunbeam magic happens on the return pass. So I do have more video plans for you guys. I've just been really swamped with work and with family stuff and with... Um, the change of season and the kids at school having their stuff going on and I'm trying to juggle an awful lot. Mara was home with Muffin, the grand kitten, last week, which was a lot of fun. And so you can imagine having a kitten in addition to Theo and Hobie and Minnie who lives in the basement. Like it was a lot of chaos. <laughs> um, is it because I'm doing lots of different stitches in one piece that it is not curling? That is a very good question. Okay, e mostly yes. Okay, on this last stitch though, I wanna go do, so take a good look, I'm turning it toward me. Take a good look. Can you guess where the hook is gonna go to pick up the last two stitches or the last stitch? Can you see it? Where is it gonna go? Take your guess. Okay, here it's gonna happen. So if I'm looking at it from the front, it's here. Okay, so I'm splitting that last stitch, and when I turn it toward me, I can see that I have two loops. Okay, did you get it? <laughs> okay, so now we're doing the return pass with the um, sunbeam fan thing. Okay, um, and I lost track of what I was saying again. It was something, what was I saying? The older I get, the more ADD I get. Uh, shoot, what was it? Let me, I'm reading the quote, the comments. Tunisian sizes. Oh yeah, curling. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. So because I am doing several stitches, it is not curling. Now it would curl if like I had just the full stitch and just the Tunisian simple stitch in a fabric of all of those together. It would curl more. See this very first row is Tunisian simple stitch and it already wants to curl because you're pulling, yeah, too much coffee or not enough. You're When you're Tunisian simple stitching and Tunisian full stitching, you're pulling the yarn from the back of the fabric to the front. So you're creating a tension 
on the front that makes it want to curl. But when you do like yarn overs, it adds more air and it lessens up the tension so that it can lay smoother. Look how the, the um, fan stitch has lots of air in it and so it reduces the tension on pulling on every single stitch toward the front. So yes, when you change and added stitches, um, I will add a link after this video processes for the tools that I would suggest for someone who's just learning Tunisian crochet. Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. Um, so a multiple stitches balances out the tension on the fabric, pulling to the front and pulling to the back. So fabrics that have Tunisian pearls in it <clears throat> and Tunisian simple stitches will balance each other better. In general, patterns that have more than one Projects that have more than one stitch pattern are going to balance each other better than just the same stitch over and over again that just wants to pull toward the center with the tension over and over and over and over again. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we are back on the fan. So the fan was yarn over pull through one, which is a chain, then chain two, which is still yarn over pull through one. So we're tricking ourselves into doing three chains. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But when we pull up, it magically looks like just five rays of sun. One, two, three, four, five, because the sixth one is hidden over here by my thumb over here. Okay, so we will now chain four, yarn over, pull through one, two, three, four chains. Whoop, dropped it. And then yarn over and pull through six. When we yarn over and pull through six, the first yarn over is just another chain. And so we're yarning over one, which is chaining, and then pulling through one, two, three, four, five, six, so that you only see five rays of sun there. And then the sun on top is the, the first chain of the chain one. There's the sun right there. Two, three, four. And we'll do this all the way across. Yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, of course you can do it. <laughs> okay, the ray of sun is chain one and then chain one, two, three. More for a total of four chains. You should, yeah, absolutely, it is so much fun. You don't have to do all four stitches in one though. Like go back and look at the videos that are just one stitch at a time and start with the Tunisian simple stitch. That's only like a two or three minute video. So you can totally do this. Yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, five, six, so that when you pull up, there are five sunbeams, one, two, three, four, five, because the sixth one gets buried over here. Sorry, I was out of camera there a little bit. Make the ray of sun with the first chain, or the sun itself with the first chain, and then one, two, three more chains for a total of four. And then the last one is gonna be odd. So we're pulling through that final grouping, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have some left over here. So we're gonna make the sun and then chain again, and then yarn over and pull through two, but changing color to green now. So I'm just picking up the green. Now friends, because I'm working multiple colors in Tunisian, and I'm working the forward pass and the return pass, the return pass the yarn is left for me at the end, ready to pick up. So the yarns are just being carried up the sides. Okay, so the yarn is just being carried up the side. No big deal. There's no like floating along the back. This is what the back looks like. So it looks like pearl stitches a lot. So it, it is going to curl toward the front a little bit because you can see all the pearl bumps that most of the work is on the front. So it's gonna be front heavy. <laughs> so it's gonna curl toward the front. <laughs> so when you think of like a very large chested woman, she might hunch her shoulders a little bit because she's heavier on the front than she is on the back. And so that is what happens with Tunisian crochet. All of the good stuff <laughs> is on the front. And so we need to teach it to have good posture and stand up straight. Um, despite the tension on the front. And so if we balance it with other stitches, that works. And also if we block it, that works. And also if we um, create air um, and air it up or lighten it up on the front, that also works. Okay, so here we were just gonna do Tunisian simple stitch across. So before I wind up today, does anybody have any 
comments or questions about these four stitches. Um, you now have your instructions for the giveaway. I'm going to, oh, I didn't tell you guys, one of the other big things that you may have seen on Instagram is that I have agreed to a commission for the first time in kind of years. <laughs> so um, after I left Annie's as the editor there, I wrote a book and did and you know worked on the YouTube channel and stuff. And I have not been a designer for hire in quite a while. But a company recent, I'm not going to disclose who because the contract's not signed yet, but a company contacted me out of the blue the other day and asked if I wanted to design an Afghan. Thank you, Carleen. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to make something for hire, for fun, you know. So the the project specs intrigued me. So um, I said yes. So while the yarn is on its way to me, I have a window of a few days <laughs> to try and get in a whole, film a whole bunch of videos for you and have them in the lineup so that when the yarn arrives for that project and my small window of time to get that whole thing done happens and I need to work feverishly on that, um, I will have videos to dole out every Wednesday. That is the plan. Okay, so on this last one, now there's there were three chains here, remember? So for me to find the last stitch, it's the one closest to the fabric, the chain at the bottom, turn it towards us, and can you already see those two um, strands where I'm gonna go in? So this one is trickier because it's chains, and so it's a little bit harder to see, but it's the, the chain that is closest to the fabric, Again, we'll split the two in front. When you see one, two, we're gonna split it. Turn it towards us, and you can see if you split it and poke the hook straight through to the back, you'll grab two strands, okay? Do you see that? And then pull up a loop, okay. And then we would count and make sure that we have 27. But I think this is gonna be all for me today, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for hanging with me. Um, don't forget to leave a comment and um, in the comments below if you're watching this on replay. Your comments live on chat also count and uh, we will work it out. So um, I'm, I'm not going to make this into a full project. It's going to be just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get working on something else. But I wanted to teach you these four stitches all put together. And um, you can see that Tunisian can be integrated with one another, putting it all together, these four stitches that I have individual videos for all of them. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Remember, <laughs> crochet is a um, relaxing and valuable use of our time. I can't forget that and to add it in for my own relaxation and have a great day everybody. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you, uh, hopefully I'll see your comments by the end of the 29th and you'll be ready for the video on Wednesday. Great video close-ups lighting and color coordinated nails. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you Carleen. Yes I love my new light system and, and everything so I appreciate it. I am glad you guys could see it well. That is always the point. <laughs> so thank you so much. Bye.